All right, in this video, we are going to show you how to subtract a fraction from a mixed number, uh, in particular, fractions that are going to force us to require regrouping. So let's get started. So when we're subtracting 3 and a fifth minus 4 fifths, we could think about it as a number line. And then we can also think about it as an area model. And then lastly, we could also think about it uh, numerically. So we're going to kind of go through each of these processes. And first, starting with 3 and a fifth as a number line. So I'm going to put my fraction on a number line. So where does 3 and a fifth live? It's going to be way over here. And uh, I'm going to have to chop it up into five equal-sized intervals. One, two, three, four, five. And I can see that three and a fifth lives right there. That's where three and one-fifth lives. And uh, this four-fifths says we're supposed to go backwards uh, four-fifths of a hop, right? Well, to go from here to here, that's one-fifth but then I need to go three more fifths, don't I? So I'm gonna have to subdivide this whole number, this whole interval here, into fifths. So I'm gonna do that right now. One, two, three, four, five. Now I have enough fifths for me to go backwards four fifths. So I'm gonna get my little pen and I'm gonna go back one fifth, two fifths, three fifths, Four fifths. So I went backwards my four fifths. And where am I at now? Right here. Right there is two and two fifths. So I can see that my answer right here, three and a fifth take away four fifths, is equal to two and two fifths. All right. And, and right now, all we're doing is using a number line. So we can use the area model as well to represent this. So let's move down. And now we're going to take a look at what 3 and a fifth minus 4 fifths looks like using the area model. So really what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly draw 3 and a fifth. So there's 1, 2, 3, and 4. And uh, since we're supposed to represent 3 and a fifth, fifth, so that's one whole, that's one whole, that's one whole, so there's my three so far. Now to represent the one fifth, I'm going to have to go here, and I'm going to have to chop that up into five equal sized pieces, one, two, three, four, five, and I'm going to shade in one of those fifths. So now to uh, represent subtracting four fifths, I'm just going to cross off four fifths, but I don't have four fifths. I only have this one fifth. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this hole right here and I'm going to chop it into fifths. So now instead of me having three and one fifth, I now, so let me write that down. So instead of having three and one fifth, I now have two and six fifths if I wanted to represent it numerically. But anyway, the point is I now have enough fifths to cross off four fifths. So I'm going to do that. One, two, three, and four. So I've crossed off my four fifths right here. And I can see that I now have two holes and two-fifths left over right there. So that's my how to represent this problem using the area model. Now I'm gonna, uh, let's do this one last time, only this time we're going to represent this using uh, numbers, right? So let's see, what did we do? Well, if you think about what we did, we recognized that we did not have enough fifths to take away four-fifths. So what I had to do is I had to think about this three and one-fifth. Really, I needed to think about it as two holes and six-fifths. So this one-fifth plus five-fifths gives me 
two holes and six fifths. So really, I don't like the fact that I have that right there. So I'm gonna kind of erase that. I'm gonna see if I can erase it somehow. Uh, there, and then, boom. So that's my two and six fifths. Now I can take away my four fifths, and that's gonna give me two holes and two fifths left over. So we've got three ways of representing this same problem. Numerically, right here, or using the area model here, or using the number line here. So let's do one more example. So we're gonna start with the number line. So we're gonna represent four and three eighths on a number line. So here's my zero, one, two, three, four, and five. So to represent three eighths on the number line, I'm gonna to have to cut this interval way over here into eight pieces. So let's do that. One, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh my goodness, it's getting kind of dinky, isn't it? So in fact, I, I could zoom in and we're gonna to have to represent four and three eighths. So where's four and three eighths? Four and three eighths is right here. Four and three eighths. All right, now I'm gonna zoom back out. All right, and so now it says we need to go backwards seven eighths. Well, I only have one, two, three eighths listed or visible. So what that means is I'm gonna have to take this interval and chop it up into eighths. And so I'm gonna do that, but I'm gonna, in order to do that, I'm gonna zoom in here and I'm gonna chop that up into my eighths. There we go. One, let's see if I have my eighths. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, I got my eighths right there. So now I'm able to kind of start here at four and three eighths and go backwards my seven eighths. Now, in order to do that, let me grab my pen, my green pen, one eighth, two eighths, three eighths, four eighths, five eighths, six eighths, seven eighths. So I've gone back my seven eighths and look at where I've ended up. I've ended up right here, which is three holes plus one, two, three, four eighths. So that's three holes and four eighths where I ended up. All right, now obviously we know that three and four eighths is the same thing as three and a half. But right now, the important thing is for us to understand this number line model. Now, we can do the same problem, only this time using our area model. So I'm going to draw four and three eighths. So there's one hole, two holes, three holes, four holes, and a fifth hole. And we're going to shade these in. Oh, with green, let's say. There's one hole, two holes, three holes, four holes. Now this last one right here, I'm going to have to chop it up into eight pieces, but only shade in three of those pieces. So let's see. One, two, three, one, two, three. There's, there's my cutting up into eighths. And I'm going to shade in one, two, three of my eighths. All right. So now... I've got four and three eighths take away seven eighths, and I notice that I don't have enough eighths to cross off seven eighths. So I'm going to take one of these whole numbers and I'm going to chop it up into eighths. So let's do that. So now I do have enough eighths to cross off seven eighths. But I'm going to kind of, let's think about this numerically as well. So instead of having four and three eighths, I now have three holes and 11 eighths because I've got my three holes right here. And then I have these eight eighths plus these three eighths. So that's now three holes and 11 eighths. Now I'm going to take away my seven eighths. All right. So that's easy. I'm gonna cross off seven of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, 
7. So I've crossed off my 7 eighths. And what am I left with? I'm left with 3 wholes and 4 eighths right here. And we could see that numerically down here. I have no whole numbers to subtract here, so it's 3 take away nothing gives me 3 wholes. And then I can see that I have 11 eighths. I mean, yeah, 11 eighths take away 7 eighths gives me 4 eighths. And that's my answer. Of course, that's the same thing as three and a half, but right now we're focusing on the model. All right, so that ends our lesson on how to subtract a fraction from a mixed number that requires borrowing.